Airline pilots do a departure briefing before every takeoff. And I believe we, the pilots of light general aviation aircraft, should do that as well. When something goes wrong right after takeoff, we cannot change the laws of physics, but what we can change is how prepared we are for dealing with the situation. Here's how. All right, the runup is complete. Um, departure, I'm departing from runway 27 in Sea Rapids. I will make a normal takeoff. Any engine anomalies with runway ahead will cut the power, land straight ahead on the runway. If the engine stops later, but below 2,000 feet MSL, I will look for a field straight ahead and land there. Above 2,000 feet, I can turn right, land on runway 13, or consider other options. Uh, wind today is from the south, from my left, so a left turn is best to return to my departure runway. With that, we're ready for departure. Bands of 7 0 Tango Bravo, drop it to tower, fly runway heading right, 27 clear for takeoff, traffic 4 mile final. What I just did is I went over the unlikely but possible scenario of losing my engine during or right after takeoff and I listed viable options depending on how high I have climbed by the time something bad happens. Why is this helpful? Well, if the engine quits, we're going to be surprised. There's going to be a moment of disbelief and chaos. There could be a loud bang, a lot of vibration, there could be flames coming from under the cowling, there could be kids screaming in the back seat. Meanwhile, the adrenaline kicks in and leaves you with tunnel vision and without fine motor skills. It's just not going to be the same as on a training flight where your instructor simply pulls the throttle back and probably tells you about it ahead of time. Therefore, unlikely as it is, an engine failure in the first minute or two after taking the runway is a real challenge for any pilot. If this happens right after takeoff, you need to be prepared, and the best way to be prepared is to do a departure briefing, just before takeoff. And I mean before every takeoff you make. There's some tailoring that makes sense for this briefing to reflect what kind of airplane you're flying. For example, in a twin you would go over the drill to feather and shut down the engine if needed, while in a single, like in my Bonanza, we're more concerned about where to land should that only engine quit. And you can maximize your chances of a good outcome by making the necessary decisions ahead of time while still on the ground. The idea is to help you make a decision that makes an engine failure survivable. And there are two components to this which are both very important. The first is about being able to actually come to a decision. The second is about the outcome of that decision. Let's talk about both for a moment. The theoretically best possible choice isn't going to do you any good if you can't make that decision in the moment of terror with all the noise and vibration and adrenaline when your brain will operate at only a fraction of its normal capacity. Therefore, setting things up such that the decision is easy to make is just as important as making a good decision. The worst possible outcome will be to not make a decision at all while trying to do math in your head or while trying to remember the wind direction and speed. For example, for my self-imposed rule to not turn back to the airport below 1000 feet above ground I round up to the nearest 500 feet on the altimeter, to make things easy. Now oh, wait a second, why do I have to be more than a thousand feet above ground before I try to return to the airport? I should be able to do that from, say, 800 feet, right? And put the aircraft back on the runway instead of damaging it by landing in a field. Well, maybe, on a good day. If I respond right away, keep the ball set into the turns, fly at the best speed. If you are high enough to easily return to the airport and land on a runway without any question and doubt, then do so, of course. But don't take an 80% chance of returning to the airport if the other 20% might end in a stall and spin accident. It's just not worth it. Another good thing to consider is the direction of your first turn should you elect to return to the airport. Is left or right better? Turning into the wind will help you stay closer to the runway's center line. That's pretty obvious when you look at it, but instead of trying to remember the wind direction in that moment of great confusion after the engine quits, make that decision ahead of time and tell yourself in the briefing, I should make a left turn today to return to the departure runway. Depending on what you fly and where you fly, there may be other things to consider. And your briefing may of course consider more than just a possible engine out. For example, you can include the initial steps for your instrument departure or nearby terrain and your plan for avoiding it. So don't just copy my briefing style. Instead, think about what challenges lie ahead during the very first minutes of the flight you are going to make and structure your briefing accordingly. 
And even if you're alone in the airplane, say the words out loud to make the briefing effective. And speaking of effective, I keep the departure briefing short and cover only what's important for the first couple of minutes of my flight. There are of course other types of information which should be briefed before flight, like a detailed review of the full instrument departure procedure and the radio setup necessary to fly it. Those things are important, but they can be briefed effectively before you start taxiing. For the departure briefing itself, focus on the response to an emergency, such as loss of engine power or a fire. Prepare to deal with the unexpected, and to do that effectively, it helps to keep things short and simple. I hope you too make it a habit to do a departure briefing when you fly. Hoping for some good discussion here in the YouTube comments section on how you all tailor this briefing for your aircraft or for the airports you fly out of. Thank you for watching, and as always, I appreciate if you can please hit the like and the subscribe buttons that will help me grow the channel and make more videos. Fly safe and see you next time.